just give you a bit of a test, okay? How many of you can remember what you need to do? Pinky is? Yeah, good one. Yes. 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 Starts with an M. Meditate. Apply. Okay? So if you can just grab a hold of God's word. Okay? Not just not just one or two of them. Because the Bible says if you just do the little one and two here and read, but not apply the others, the enemy could come and grab the word or steal the word from you very easily. But when you memorize... When you apply, when you study, when you meditate, when you read, you will get a hold of God's word and it's going to be so powerful. And I just got a, there's a quick testimony that I want to share. This week I had the opportunity to go and uh, do some work for an elderly um, gentleman. When I got to his house, he was actually resting on a massage bed. So there was a masseuse there giving him a massage on his back. And then his daughter came out. I think if I'm not wrong, I think it's Catherine, okay? I'm not sure. I just can't fully remember. She came out and she saw me. She said, oh, what are you doing? I said, oh, we're the gardeners. We're coming to tidy up the garden. Oh, sure. I'll call mom to come out. I said, okay. I said, I'd love to say hi to mom. So she came out and I said, hi, Yvonne, how are you? How's everybody? Good, good. I said, oh, is this your daughter? She said, yeah, it's my daughter. I said, I've never met her before. This is my first time seeing her. And then we begin to talk. As we talk, she said to me, I'm feeling a bit weak today. I said, why are you feeling weak? She said to me, she said, I've got cancer. Okay. I said, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. She said, yeah, I'm going through some treatment. I've got cancer. And then I said to her, I said, oh, it's an awful thing. And I said, my sister had cancer as well. But, you know, we prayed for her. I told her, I said, we prayed for her. She said, oh, really? I said, yes, we did. She said, how is your sister now? I said, oh, she's recovered. And this is the thing she said. She said, prayers are powerful, aren't they? Dun, 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 dun. My Zoom is on, man. My radar is on already. And I said, it is. I said, it is powerful. Then I said to her, would you like me to pray for you? She just went, she went like that. She said, oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Then I said, I said, I believe in a God that heals. Hallelujah. I believe in a God that heals. And I said to her, my sister did not do any chemo treatment. She said, really? She said, I'm doing it and it's making me feel so weak. I said, yeah, what it does, the, the, the chemical or the solution or the medicine, it does, it does kill the bad cells, but it also attacks your good cells. So I suggested to her what my sister was doing in getting the uh, proper nutrients and all that sort of stuff into her body to just get her immune system strong. So she, we were just talking and my worker, my dear friend, he was out there mowing, okay, just let him mow, okay. And I just keep talking to this lady, but something in my heart, in my spirit jumped out and I said, the verses, the verses, listen carefully, the Bible verses jumped out at me. And it jumped into her. And I said, the Lord says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And she just go, oh, that's awesome. Prayers are powerful, aren't they? I said, they are. I said, I'll be praying for you. And I'm believing God to touch you. So when I come around next time, I'm going to bring some good berries for you from my garden. She said, oh, thank you. That's so kind of you. I said, there's nothing. But I want God to touch you. Most important that God touches you. You see what I'm saying? The scripture. The scripture. The verses of the Bible. When you're in a situation, wherever you are, the verses will jump out from you into others. Because the Bible, the scripture, will touch you. And will reveal the truth of who God is. So there you go. This is a test. 
next week I'm going to pick you. I make sure everybody comes to church. Huh? <laughs> no, you don't have to worry. Okay, I'm going to ask. No, no, why don't you come help me? Just pass a copy to each person. All right, and then you take a take a. Sorry, I'll just take one of them. Yeah, pass it to everybody. Uh, just a copy, and I want to encourage you to memorize. The scripture, there is a few there, like I said, there's three verses on healing, three verses for those that are, you know, anxious or worry about things, and then there's three scriptures on the promises of God. These are just a few of them. There are just hundreds and hundreds of scriptures, okay? But I want you to just start receiving God's word into your heart and, and practice, meditate, apply, study, read the word of God. All right? So most of us under the promises category, Jeremiah 29, 11, most of us could be able to just quote that scripture from memory because one of those popular favorite scriptures Okay, for I know the plans or the thoughts that I have or think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. What an incredible scripture. This is all taken as he took, look at the top there, all scriptures are taken from the New King James Version. Okay, so please do take some time this week even you can start tonight. Memorize a scripture, right? Oh, I love it. I just, I, I, to be honest with you, I, I love to memorize scripture. Because you know why? In every situation of my life, the word of God, the scriptures always jumps out. And I know that it will touch and penetrate people's lives. All right, so do that. And uh, now, not to worry, okay, I won't be picking on you next week. Make sure you're at church, all right? I might just come to you privately. I say, Isla, yeah, give me, a, give me a scripture on the promises of God. And Isla will be going, yay, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Yes, 10 points, Hallelujah. Special dessert you're going to get. <laughs> All right? So let's do that, yeah? So praise God. Well, I'm, I'm really, really, um, I'm really excited, actually, uh, in this season. You know why? We are stepping into the new season. Hallelujah. In our last prayer meeting. You see, when people pray, I don't know about you, when people pray, I, when I'm listening to what people pray, and it just gels in my spirit. I think it was Heather. Heather, you see that? I was, she was praying. She said, God, thank you that you're leading us into a new season. I remember, and I hear, and I say, God, as that resonate in my spirit in the month of April, preparation for the promised season. Everybody say amen. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 10, the scripture says, So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, Go through the camp and tell the people, Get your provisions, Everybody read it with me, Ready. Get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan, which is an obstacle, here to go in and take possession of the land your Lord, the Lord your God is giving you for your own. Getting ready, being prepared to take a hold of the promised season that God has for you, for me, for our families, for our children, for our church. Great news. I've just signed the contract. Hallelujah. So the agent, this is an incredible. The agent rang me and said, 
can you meet me this afternoon uh, on site and we can get a paper signed? I said, oh, I can't be there. I mean, I'm way out in Thornbury installing a door from a cu for a customer. Then he said, you're in Thornbury? I said, yes. He said, what time are you there? Oh, I said, I'll be there like nearly all day. And he said to me, I'm actually in Thornbury too. I said, my gosh, how does it all happen? Yes, right. So he's saying to me, you have to sign. So I said, okay, ring me when you're, when you're there. So I said, I said, I'll ring you when I get to that place, which is Swift Street in Thornbury. I got there, so I sent him a text. I said, hey, Sam, I'm here, so just come over when you can. I said, where are you? He said, I'm just in the next street. <laughs> Doesn't take you long to come across. He came over. He said, all right, here we go. Bang, 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 sign, sign, sign. As soon as I put my signature on the paper, I said to Sam, the agent, I say, here it is, sign, sealed, delivered. And my worker next to me and go, wow, this is it. I say, this is it. We're taking possession. Hallelujah. This is it. I said, we are going. We are going. We are going. But before you go in, there's a lot of what? Preparation. I want you to really capture this month and next month, May and June. These three months, the themes that are coming out over these three months, I want you to capture, not just hear my, my words, but I want you to hear the words or the voice that is behind my voice, which is the voice of the Holy Spirit. You will hear my voice coming through the microphone, obviously. Hopefully it's clear for you to capture and understand, but there is a voice behind my voice, which I want you to pick up what the Spirit of God is saying to you. As an individual, to you and your family, and to us as a church, I want you to hear and capture. So what do we need to prepare? What is it that God is asking us to prepare as we enter into the promise season? Do you know what the incredible thing is? The first day of the lease, the first day of the lease, Happens to be my wife's birthday. Hallelujah. I mean, I just think about all these things. I say, man, they are not coincidences. The one that I love, the one that I cared for, is like God is saying to me, this is your baby. Yeah, she is my baby, but the big baby. Okay? But this, now, as you enter into the next season, this is your baby. And I've set it forth for you as you enter in. 5th of May, I'm getting the keys. I don't know about you, but I am maybe going there to stay the night. <laughs> the next season, as God prepares us. Listen carefully now. There's some important things. Allow me this afternoon to just expound a little bit on this particular statement. There is a spiritual whisper. See, as the pastor of this church, we don't have that many people here obviously at the moment, but as the pastor of this church, I am aware and I'm constantly just seeking and say, God, where are you taking us? What is what is happening? Where are you leading? What is it that you're doing in my life personally, in my family, in the church, in each one, every one of, of you? And there is a spiritual whisper. And that word, preparation, came to me. Be prepared. As Joshua said to the nation of Israel, all right? Do you know who spoke first? The interesting thing is, do you know who spoke first? It was God who spoke first. God says, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. But now you rise up. Take the nation into the land that I have promised to give them. And there is a word here called preparation. That we need to, each one of us, be prepared. 
I'm telling you now, God will speak to you. He's going to ask you to do things maybe you've never done before in this next season. Maybe he's going to ask you to do something uh, out of the ordinary. Maybe he's going to challenge you to start laying hands on people and believe for the healing virtue of Jesus to flow. Maybe he's going to speak to you and ask you to go the second mile, to give beyond what you've ever given. Maybe he's going to tell you to do whatever he's going to tell you. But you've got to be prepared. What is the next one? There's going to be an acceleration. Do you know the word acceleration? It's going to be fast. Do you know the incredible thing is this? When God does something, he does it, I mean, he does it, sorry, pretty quickly. When the disciples got into the boat, the Bible says, immediately they were on the other side. Hey, think about that for a moment. They just got into the boat and, oh my gosh, wow, I'm in, in, in the other side of the, of, of the lake already. And the Bible says in the book of Acts, there was a, a mighty rushing wind. When the wind comes, man, they come quick. So and there's going to be an acceleration as we step into now the promised season of what God is going to do. And you've got to be ready. The acceleration will come and it will come fast. It will come fast. Before you know it, there may be people coming to you. What must I do to be saved? Hallelujah. I love that, man. If somebody comes up to me and says, hey, I want to be a Christian. What do I do to be saved? Ooh, you're at the right place. You're talking to the right person. Oh, can I lead you to Jesus? Can I lead you to Christ? People that you can be uh, walking the streets and maybe, you know, I mean, I know the head that does that often, go out there and talk to people. The acceleration, hallelujah. Wouldn't that be great? Isn't it? As you talk, as you, the Holy Spirit leads you, by the way, and you, as you witness, as you talk to people. Sometimes God gives you words of knowledge or words of wisdom or words of discernment about the certain individual. There's going to be acceleration. And next one is what? Expectation. Hallelujah. What do you expect in the coming months? What do you expect? If you expect nothing, you're going to get nothing. If you start expecting something, you're going to get the something that God wants to bring to you. You see, if you can just come to this place, and I, and I wrote this, <laughs> I don't know about you, man, but I wrote this statement now, I was just so excited, which leads to what? The divine alignment and everybody say, harvest. Hallelujah. Because you see, when things are aligned, when the vision is aligned, when we are in alignment, everything runs accordingly. Have you ever driven a car that's out of alignment? Let go of the steering wheel, you know. The car pulls to the left or it pulls to the right because it's out of alignment. Where it's meant to be going straight. But please don't drive, you know, you've got to hold your steering wheel, yeah? Don't drive without holding your steering wheel. But when you're testing something, if it's not aligned, it leans or goes towards one side. Eventually, anything that is out of alignment, what does it do? It will wear you out. As it wears out the tire. You realize that? Usually the side of the tires is getting bolder and bolder before you, you know it. You've lost all the rubber edges of the tire because it's out of alignment. Divine alignment. That means it's not just our alignment, but it is aligned to the purposes and the plans of God. That's why it's called divine alignment. And then oversee harvest. I am excited. As we step into this promised season, oh God, I say, Father, my heart, you know my heart, Lord, my heart, I want to see people come to Jesus. 
I want to see people healed. I want to see people restored. I want to see people fall in love with Jesus. I want people to experience who you are, God. I said, God, I've walked with you. I've experienced you for so many years, but yet there are still so many people there that haven't had the opportunity, that haven't had the realization, that haven't had the knowledge of who you are. And God, my heart, I want them to know you. I want them to fall in love with Jesus. So, if you don't know me, you should know me by now. <laughs> I want people to experience Jesus. That's what the church is here for. The church is not just here for us to have a good time, nothing wrong with that, but the church is here for those that do not know Jesus. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Because we need to reach out to them. We need to bring them in. We need to see the harvest. And God is saying that to us. And we need to what? Prepare. We need to plan. Okay? There's a lot of things. In Proverbs 24, verse 27, it says, Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field. And after that, build your house. I love the scripture. It didn't say, oh, build your house first and then get the house of the Lord in order. Put the house of the Lord in order first. Get yourself ready in the field. What is the field? The harvest. After that, build your house. That's what the Bible says in Matthew, yeah? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things may be added to you. Did they say that? Just testing. All these things will be added to you. But before that, the scripture says, well, do not be anxious. Do not fret. Do not worry. Okay? The birds of the air. God knows how to look after them. The trees in the field. God knows how to look after them. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. I want to challenge us as you prepare for this promised season. God will speak to you. He will speak to me. Of the things that he's asking you to be prepared for. Be prepared, like I said. Go the extra mile. Be prepared to be bold. <laughs> I was just saying this uh, the other night, wasn't I? Was it a uh, life group, life group, online life group. Do you know there's something in my heart? I, by the grace of God, I am fearless. I still remember one of the guys in the team always says, always says this, our fearless leader. <laughs> I'm fearless. I fear nobody. I fear no snakes, no spiders, no nothing. I don't even fear the enemy. But I fear God. <laughs> okay? But when I come to talk to people and, and share the gospel, in that regard, I'm fearless. Why? Because I've been doing it all the time, just doing it as the Holy Spirit enables me, because the Bible says, and the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. So I'm fearless when it comes to talking to people about Jesus. And whether they accept or not accept, I say, God, it's up to you to do that. Yeah? But my job my, is just go out and Give the good news. That's why the Bible says also, be prepared in season and out of season. Be prepared. If somebody asks you for something of who God is, be prepared to share. Be prepared to open your mouth. Be prepared to just let the good news of the gospel. It's not bad news. It's good news. Hallelujah. News that will touch. News that will heal. News that will deliver. I want to share that good news. So, Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field. And after that, build your house. God 
is preparing you for what He's prepared for you on the other side. Take a note of this very powerful statement. God is preparing you for what He has prepared for you on the other side. Do you know when the nation of Israel came out of Egypt, little did they realize that God is actually preparing them to begin with. You see, if you read in the book of Exodus, it's talk about how God did not take them through the shorter route, but rather the longer route. Why? Because God is preparing them for what He has prepared for them. So we know for the last two years, pandemic, too endemic. Okay? Now, honestly, you don't usually hear a lot about, how many of you hear a lot about COVID? Hardly now. All we are hearing about is the war, yeah? In Russia and, and Putin, 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 you know? And what's the, what's the president's name of Ukraine? Yeah, Zelensky, yeah? He, he made an address to parliament just last week. He's been addressing a lot of the parliament of the different nations of the earth, you know, just trying to rally support and everything. So you hear a lot about, but hardly hear now about pandemic. You know, some people do get very worried, all right, uh, about the whole thing. I say, if you do get COVID, chill out, man, just relax. Don't fear. As long as you're healthy, as long as you're, you know, obviously in good, good heart, good, good, as in good, physically, do not fear. It will come and it will go. My daughter had, she's, she's all good, you know, and I uh, said, oh, no, no, I don't. I said, no, please, you've got to be careful, be sensible, yeah. And I just go into the room, I just say, oh, Kiara, let daddy come and pray for you. You're not meant to be in the room with me. It's okay, God is with me, hallelujah. Come, Dad, pray for you in Jesus' name. Lord, be healed. How are you feeling better? A little bit. <laughs> That's all right. You'll feel better by tomorrow. Oh, good. But now we're coming now, what I said, what? To the other side. Now, listen to this. Allow me, just for a few moments, to share a little bit about what I'm thinking and feeling. As you go through into the other side, the next phase of your life and of your journey, and for us as a church, some of us are wondering, God, why is it taking so long? Have you ever thought about that? Lord, why has it been so hard? Lord, why did this happen to me? Lord, I, I don't really deserve this. I, I, I don't really have to go through this. What are you doing, God? Some of us may be going through that right now. You're thinking, God, I don't understand. It's okay. Chill out. Let it go. You know why? Because God is preparing you. Most important, it's not just what He has for you, but He's preparing you. The nation of Israel didn't realize that they went through all their struggles, crossing the Red Sea. Why? So they can see the mighty hand of God at work separating the water. Then they encounter another obstacle, no water to drink. The water from the rock came. No food to eat. Manna dropped from heaven. All those things they had to go through for 40 years in the wilderness, they could have gone the easy way. God could have said, to them, I'm going to take you to the promised land. Tomorrow you enter in. But no, God took them the long way. Why? Because there was a preparation for what He wants to do in each and every one of them individually so that they can be like Caleb and Joshua at the end of the day. They are people with different spirit. The Israelites complain and murmured against Moses. Why did you bring us out here? It's better that we go back to the land of Egypt. Is there no graves in Egypt to bury us? Look at that mentality. Complain, murmur, grumble. But yet, God 
was teaching them something, preparing them. So, like I said, now we're coming to the other side now. The other side of the endemic. Pandemic to endemic. You still hear of news of, you know, the different uh, mutation and this and that. Everything is sort of like coming down to more, what's the word? Not the old normal, the new normal. Okay? And we are, we are, we are now going to that direction now. But yet, I want to encourage you because God is doing something as we cross to the other side. As we cross to the other side, God is preparing you and you need to plan. If you fail to plan, Benjamin Franklin said this wonderful quote, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. See that? Now, you got to get ready, all right? Now, only you know what God is speaking to you about, that you need to get ready. So you need to plan. If God is saying to you, I want you to draw close to me. I want you to hear my voice in this next season. I want you to draw close. I want you to really be sensitive to my Holy Spirit, what I'm going to talk to you about. So what do you do? He said, oh God, thank you for that. I'll just do nothing. No, you've got to plan. All right, Lord, Monday night, I'm going to spend some time and just wait before you. I'm going to read your word. I'm going to let you speak to me. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to worship. I'm going to worship in song. I'm going to worship in scripture. Thank you, Heather, for sending me that wonderful thing. Oh, it's Dennis. Sometimes I don't know who it is, one of you anyway. Okay? When I received this, it's a scripture in song. And the note was, do you remember this? As I look at that, I said, I sure do. I used to sing it in the 60s. In the 70s. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Sing in the spirit and with understanding. Oh, magnify the Lord. Da, 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 da. You know, I used to sing it so much when I was in the younger days. But you know what? That song stays with me. It's like that scripture. It stays with me. You know, when I'm going through those tough challenges or tough times, what does the Bible say? Put on the garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. That's why. The Word of God is so incredible. Understanding, memorizing. So, if the Lord say to you, spend time with me. Give me your prime time. Prime time, Lord, that's my TV time. Yes, forget that TV. Give me your prime time. Take that time when you are least distracted. Read my Word. Study. Ponder. Sila, which means ponder, consider. God wants us to be strong. Next, please. It's frozen. Can you put that for me? Thank you. God wants us to be strong and courageous. Joshua 1 verse 9. This is the verse prior to the verse that we have on the screen when God said to Joshua, get the people ready. You see that? Before he even got a chance to get the people ready, this is what the Lord had to say to him. He says, Joshua, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So it was after this scripture Joshua then says, come on people, the Lord has spoken. Get your provisions ready. Because in three days, we're going to go into the land. Hallelujah. So God wants you and I to be strong. To be courageous. To be fearless. Hallelujah. To have the courage and the faith to step into this promised season that God has for us.
And I am, like I said to you, you know, I, I'm, I'm just really excited in my heart, excited in my spirit of what God is about to do, what He wants to release to our fellowship here, to release you as an individual, to release to your family. Now, talent plus people, people that are gifted and talented, who prepare well, will live by this motto. What is that? All's well that begins well. So when you start anything, or when you venture into anything, listen, you're not going to have all the answers, neither would anybody. But you want to be prepared and go in. You know that saying, go in and be prepared as the best that you can, correct? So be prepared the best that you can so that you, when you encounter some of the situations or problems that you will face, at least they say that you are prepared. And I hear this often. People say, don't be ill-prepared. That means I do nothing. I just sit down and do nothing. Just wait. No, it's not going to happen. But when you think, when you strategize, when you plan, when you study, when you put into practice, apply, and I am a firm believer, have always have and always will, the Holy Spirit will always lead you. He will always lead you. Okay, He will always guide you. He will speak to you about the things that you are attempting to step into or the things that you've never ever done before. The Holy Spirit say, this is it. Take that step of faith. And you go, but God, I've never done it before. God says, good. Take that step of faith. Get into it. And you hear my story. You know, when I first came to Melbourne, I said to God, God, I've never been a pastor before. I don't know what to do. Pastor Rick Seward said to me, go to Melbourne and take the church. Ah! I've never done this before. I said, Lord, what should I do? I don't know what to do. And God said to me, that's fantastic. You don't know what to do. Then you are relying on me. Because if you know what to do, you have all the answers, you know what to do, then you don't need me. Because you don't know what to do, you've got to call upon me. You've got to seek my face. You've got to give you know, your heart and your devotion and just let me bless you. And one of the, I said this before, okay? And I'll say it again. The Lord said to me, go to Melbourne. This is what he said, as clear as a bell. He says, go to Melbourne and love my people. That's all he said to me. He then said to me, I want you to be with 10,000 uh, uh, member church I want you to build this I want to build that all he said to me go and love my people and I want to tell all of you guys and girls I love you I really do if you don't know just come and test me <laughs> I do I do I do really I do really I love each one of you as God brings you into this family or in whatever way I can reach out and care for and, and provide and assist, whatever. That's what he said to me. But I've got to prepare. All's well that begins well. I'm going to finish. Oh, man, I've got so much to say to you. Preparation positions people correctly and is the separation between moving ahead or lagging behind. It's all about preparation. Preparing to hear the voice of God. Preparing to do what God is asking us to do. I tell you right now, as we go into the next promise season, there are going to be some things that God is speaking to me that I'm going to do that I've never done before. Okay? Is it scary? Yes. Is it, does it worry me? No. Does it give me, you know, sleepless nights? No. But it is scary. It is like, God, only you know how it's all going to happen. But I'm going to take this step. I'm going to trust you, Lord. You're going to bring about. You're going to bring the people. You're going to bring uh, the, the, the tools and the equipment. You're going to bring whatever we need, Lord, for your kingdom's sake. 
for your church, for your body, for your children. Lord, you will do what is necessary. And all of us, and I say this, all of us, we all need to prepare, okay? Because as we position people, preparation positions people, what is that word? Correctly in the right slot, with the right gifting, with the right heart, with the right motive, with the right agenda. Guess what? We're going to be moving ahead. Hallelujah. We're not going to be lagging behind. We're going to be moving ahead. All right? Some of you will be, will be asking, hey, can you do this? Oh, but I've never done it before. Give it a go. Give it a go, man. Try it. Before you know it, you go, oh, yeah. <laughs> My dear wife, she is funny, man. I've got to say something about her. She said to me, I think I'm going to get somebody to come and do the painting. I said, why? I can paint. She said, no, your painting is not good. I said, how dare you? No, I said, you know. So I said, why don't you do it then? So she just started painting, you know. I came back home yesterday. I said, I said honey, you said your job. She said, yeah, my painting is not good. I said, why don't you let me paint? I said, come on, hop down. I can do this a lot quicker than you because I've been up and down ladders all the time. I get up there. Whee, whee, whee. Then she came out, she said, wow, that was fast. I said, yeah. She said, but you missed one spot. <laughs> and I said, hey, you got to get ready. You know, we're going to position. I said, well, if you're not going to be, okay, uh, obviously, uh, as in skilled in that area, it's okay. I mean, neither am I, but I want to give it a go. I want to do it. And, uh, one time, the funniest, this is the funniest thing I want to share. This is funny. When we first got the church trailer, I think some of you remember, Jane might remember the church trailer. Richard, remember the church trailer? We had a silver trailer, and I, we used to pack all the stuff inside it and take it to the school hall, you know. And, and honestly, to reverse a trailer is not easy if you haven't done it before. Because your maneuver has got to be very little, because the, the trailer sp spins the other direction. You could lock it and jam it. So the funniest thing was, I brought the trailer back home. That we were living in Straband at that time, and I tried to reverse the trailer. And Jenny came out and said, "Why are you taking so long?" I said, "Honey, it's not easy to back a trailer. I'm not used to it." She said, "Oh, just come on, come on. Let me do it. Let me do it." She jumped onto the car and it took her 20 minutes, and she's trying, still trying to back it in. 20 minutes. And I said to her, "I said, honey, I thought you were good." She said, I thought I was. <laughs> I said, come on, come on. So I get in there, and by the time I, oh, I slowly got a hang of it. Now, who oh, praise God, I'm a trailer revert expert. <laughs> oh, it's tricky. I said to my staff, I, I said, hey, guys, I want to teach you how to back a trailer. Anybody wants to have a competition? <laughs> they said to me, no, 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 no. You will win, you will win. I said, no. <laughs> okay. But when you are, Getting it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. What happened? You will be in a position. You will be in a position where God is going to put you and is going to place you and then you will feel and sense it. You sense it in your heart. This is the right thing. And you're going to move forward. You're going to move forward. Okay, you're not going to be lagging behind, but you're going to move forward. And said, oh God, thank you. As we enter into this next season, we are going to be preparing, positioning people correctly. Okay, it's a separation between moving ahead or lagging behind. So I'm excited, like I said, in the next season. And I trust that you will be too as you journey and we journey together and what God has for us. I still got about another 10 slides to show you. Keep it for next week. Okay? But why don't you stand with me? And stand together. And can I ask you to do one thing as we prepare for the next promised season? Lift your hand toward heaven right now, everybody. Hallelujah. And ask God to prepare you. Hallelujah. As He's preparing 
what He has prepared for you, but He has to prepare you first. You as His son and as His daughter. The Bible says no, no good thing will the Father withheld from those that He loves. He will not withheld any good things from you. But He's asking for you to prepare yourself. Prepare out in the field. Prepare what God is asking you to. And then, He says, then and only then build your house. Put your focus right now in this next season of saying, God, I, I want to walk with you. I want to journey with you. I want to hear your voice. I want to just receive all that you have for me. Father, we thank you today for who you are. Thank you for your word. Lord, together as your church, as your children, God, you're speaking to us. There is a spiritual whisper, preparation, and after that, acceleration, and then expectation, which all comes down to divine alignment and harvest. That's what you are having for us. In every aspect of our lives, oh God, I thank you. We want to see a harvest, a harvest of those of us that are in business, that we are blessed by God. A harvest for those that are in relationships that will continue to flourish. A harvest for those that are, oh God, not well in body to be healed totally and utterly restored in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you for that. Today, we pray as your church. Father, lead us. We are more than willing as we listen to your voice. We thank you for today. Thank you for those that are online, Lord. Oh, bless them, I pray. And we pray together. Bless them. Keep them safe. Keep them healthy. Lead them, God, to where you have a, 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 a place for them in all that they do. And we thank you for this afternoon in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen.